Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Blue Note here in New York City. Vocalist Rhonda Thomas tonight is performing selections off her latest CD, and throughout her career, she's played with and sang with some of the greats, ranging from Isaac Hayes to Incognito to Duele. And what I really, really love about this is there's one that she's able to fuse all of our musical vernacular, meaning blues, jazz, soul, and funk into her music. She covers quite a few different types of songs on this, ranging from the Weather Girls to Isaac Hayes, but her songwriting is very crisp and very original. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of Miss Rhonda Thomas. <laughs> can say when listening to this and listening to all three of your albums this album you go for the juggler on here you 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 do a whole bunch of funky original adaptations of weather girls and and Isaac Hayes what was it about this record that you wanted to do going into this wow I just really enjoyed being able to do all the different genres of music. Like you said, paying homage to true music, good music, real music. I sang with Isaac Hayes for 11 years before he passed away in 2008. And so I really wanted to pay homage to him and sing Do Your Thing because we used to sing that together on his shows. And what can you say about Two Tons of Fun, The Weather Girls? That's just a great party song. And growing up in Long Island, we just heard that song all the time, so I definitely wanted to sing that. Martha Wash and the Weather Girl. That's right. That's right. Two tons of fun. You know, it's very, very hard to hear real soul music today. I mean, we've been so watered down with American Idol and all of these reality-based TV shows, and you're kind of like a fresher breath of air. How is it now putting out a record like this, being indie? How has it helped and how has it hurt now? It's helped because it's allowed me to be able to express myself and because I'm an independent artist, I can record what I want. I can record from my heart what's true and um, I'm honest with my music. I write songs that are heartfelt, lyrics that are heartfelt, that I live and automatically people just relate to it and I think that's what's missing in today's music and on the radio. There's definitely a lot of great independent artists that are doing their thing behind the scenes and their day is going to come. You know, the the song that you and Avery do on the record, I mean, it, it really hits, it hits home. But, you know, again, it goes back to those very, very 80s soul records that we used to listen to. Definitely. Avery Sunshine is a great friend of mine, and we've spent many times together laughing and, and joking, and her voice is just incredible, and I knew I wanted her to share in this song and be able to express it in its truest art form. Um, I'm real excited about this project, Listen, and all of the, the individual songs that I've written, like I said, from the heart, from my personal experiences. I love the live instrumentation. I'm really big 
on that live drums and some horns and strings on the songs and when I perform it live I connect with the audience I connect with the different band members and I think that's real important writing is something that you do very well on this I mean I, I haven't heard anything like this in quite a while how is it being the vocalist and also going to the production and also the writer because that's got to be you are wearing multiple roles definitely multiple roles multiple hats it can be challenging at times but it's very rewarding because i'm able to have my hand in all the pots and all aspects of the project and i put my stamp on it and it's like giving birth I come up with a melody um, in my head, even the title song, listen. So I come up with that, and then I'm thinking about lyrics that I want to convey and mesh with the melody. So listen, hear me, listen, see me, listen, baby, make sure that she is the one. And so I'll work with a producer, and we come up with all these cool chords and harmonies and um, instrumentation and I get some of the best musicians out of Atlanta that's where I live now and um, we just come together and have a great time why do you haunt me so Guess who I saw today was your debut record, and it takes me back to those Joe Pass and Ella Fitzgerald records, or our contemporary version of Tuck and Patty. Yes, yes, definitely Tuck and Patty. I recorded that with my good friend, Mr. Michael Coppola. I lived in Connecticut for a little while, and we performed at different pubs and cafes and bookstores, and we did duo work. He plays the guitar, so definitely is reminiscent of Tuck and Patty. And it's interesting, when we recorded, guess who I saw today? I was in town performing with Isaac Hayes, and we just went into a studio, and we just laid all, I think it's 10 or 11 tracks in two and a half hours because we had been performing together so much that we just gelled and meshed and it was easy to do. You've straddled the whole musical vernacular. I'm talking funk. You've gone to soul. You've gone to jazz, gospel. This is something that I think more of your listeners need to get in tap to because the whole singing of standards is a lost art form now. 
Definitely. Um, my mom is a huge jazz head, and I knew it was time to get up and, and clean on Saturday mornings because she would be playing Nancy Wilson and Sarah Vaughn and Ella Fitzgerald. So it's definitely in my blood. Um, I, like you said, more people need to go to the root. To me, jazz is the root. And if you can sing jazz or play jazz, you can play anything. Getting those core um, rhythms and chords and melodies and bass lines, there's, there's nothing like that. You know, taking back to roots music too. Who were some of your influences? I mean, who were some of the women or male vocalists that just knocked you out? Definitely Sarah Vaughn. Definitely Al Jarreau. Um, Elder Bars. <laughs> Love some Elder Bars. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um, I like Chrisette Michelle nowadays. Lettucey, Jaheem. Um, it runs the gamut. Musically, what are you saying? What is it that you want your fans to to reach and hear and see also? Because you're kind of visual also. I think each song is its own little package. It's its own present that I'm presenting to the listeners. And I take a lot of time with the lyrics, um, with the melodies, with the harmonies. It really depends on the individual song that I'm singing and what I'm trying to convey. Um, the CD Listen has a song written by my mother about Darfur. The women of Darfur. There's a song called Do What You Say. It's straight ahead jazz. I want you to do what you say, not to say what you'll do. I never want to give another thought or doubt how you feel about me. So that's about a relationship. Some of them are about relationships. Um, I wrote a song. I always have a, a spiritual or an inspirational song, and it's called Unmerited Favor. And that's one of my favorites because it talks about how I think the higher powers or beings want us to be out in the world and doing what we do. Um, I know there's a lot of musicians that play in the church that are looked down upon or frowned upon because they may play in a jazz club or they may play in a, um, a dance club or something. And I, I don't think there's, I don't have a problem with that. I think we're supposed to dance. We're supposed to move our hips. We're supposed to um, move our arms and just enjoy life and enjoy music and enjoy rhythm. So a merited favor talks about that. So each song has its own individual message. You vocalists and groups incognito ndre isaac Hayes, who happened to be one of your mentors isaac really was a dynamic writer producer as well as performer and what were some of the things that that brother ike or black moses as we called him That's right. That's right. <laughs> he was black moses <laughs> what what was it about black moses that really put the fire in 70s soul music and 
he kind of changed the whole gamut of what we listen to and how we listen to the music. Definitely, I think he was an individual. He come up, came up with his own style, the bald head, the bare chest, the chains. He was his own signature icon. He didn't try to be anyone else. And people wanted to be Mr. Isaac Hayes. He had his own sound. He was the king of Stax Records, wrote for everyone. And what I'll remember most about him was just how generous he was and what a good spirit he was. You can't work with someone 11 years. Well, you shouldn't work with someone 11 years if you don't respect them and you don't get along with them. And he was just so easy to work with. Um, he allowed me to, to sing the duet with him and would announce that I had CDs for sale and announce the website. How many artists, major artists, will do that for someone? It's a big deal. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report, reporting live here at the Blue Note. I'd like to personally thank Rhonda Thomas for her time, as well as the staff and management here at the Blue Note. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Till next time, remember if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Till next time, peace. One, same,